knowledge is profit. And when people start to understand that, that what you're doing, you're, you're giving us the knowledge that allows us to make profit. That's phenomenal. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Dawson on the B. Dawson Show where I feature entrepreneurs, business owners that are having remarkable success across all different industries so that everyone that's listening or watching this show can understand that if they can do it, you can do it. Welcome to another episode of the B. Dawson Show. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Pat. Pat, introduce yourself to everybody what you do. Uh, my name is Pat Morstead, and I am the owner of Precision Landscape and from Otter Tail, Minnesota. And we're the, kind of the north central section of uh, Minnesota, and, and uh, we, we run a remarkable landscaping company there. So when I met you, how long ago was that? Last February. So Last February. So it was a, about, not, about 10, 11 months ago. Oh, yeah. oh man. <laughs> you know what's funny is when you, you know, it's like you try to explain to people uh, when, when you go to battle with a business owner and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're fighting the market, you're fighting resistance within the team, you're fighting the economy, you're fighting the government trying to impose a bunch of goofy restrictions. You, you know, when you go to battle with a business owner for only 11 months, but for some reason it feels like we've been friends for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And, and I, think that's, I think that's the piece a lot of business owners miss. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I can honestly say when I came to you in the very beginning as an owner you spend a lot of time in our world feeling alone and having you come into our lives and as a mentor and how you've changed our lives has been remarkable for us and to have the ability to be able to talk to you and tell you what our pain points are and then you you have clear direction because you've been there you've done this and that knowledge and then us to be able to take that knowledge and then apply that knowledge it, it's it's just it's it's beyond remarkable it's it's and, and 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 you and i always talk about even when we met i said you know it's one thing to feel good about something yeah. right but we don't build a business based on feelings and we don't build, build it based on hope and we don't build it based on wishing we build it based on action mm-hmm. and action with intent and you're like okay i'm all in but I want to tell the story that when we started talking about, when you were asking me, but can my market grow? Can my business grow? I've been stuck. How many years were you stuck at a million one? Uh, a couple of years at, at a million one, but much less than that prior to. Yeah. yeah. So so you're like, you're like, can I do it? I just don't know that I can do it. I feel tapped out. And I'm like, yes, you can do it. And you're like, but how do you know? And I'm like, because I know, because if you can do a million by yourself with me, you can do more. And you were like, yeah, but but you don't know my market. You went down that same track. And after two or yeah. three, you don't know my market. You don't understand what's going on. You don't know where I live. You don't understand the seasonality. And I said to you, dude, that is the same thing I've heard from every business owner for the last 25 years. Yeah. I know the things that you don't know, though. And you were like, all right, I'm all ears. Yeah. Right? And that's where we kind of started working together. Mm-hmm. So you came to one of our 10X360 programs, and in, in, in over two days, you were just like, your eyes just were wide open. What was that experience like? <laughs> well, it was phenomenal. It, it, it was literally one day with you, Brandon. I turned around, and I called my, up my wife, and I said to my wife, I said, well, we've got to follow this guy. It was literally that fast, and maybe it was because of the fact I've had consultants in the past knowing what it was that they provided me and then listening to what it is that you were going to offer for that knowledge component of everything I knew I had to follow you and, and you had not heard the things we talked about in the past even despite hiring consultants and experts correct yeah, yeah. and and so so now uh, for the people listening to this I think it's really important to understand because it feels to me like we've worked together longer, but it's it, it'll be 12 months this February. Correct. And and what's the most amount of money up until you and I met a year ago you'd ever made personally as income, what you paid yourself as a business owner in a year? Oh, I would say between 90 and 100,000. So, 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 and how long did you have that business? 
Uh, 15 years. So for 15 years, I just want the listeners to listen to this because people ask me all the time as business owners, and, and I do these shows because I want the inspiration. I want people to understand how fast things can change in life. Because most people think that these changes, you got to make big changes, which you did. But the bigger your changes are, the faster they are, and the more technically correct they are, everything else accelerates. <clears throat> so here you go. Um, we've been doing business now. It'll be exactly a year. The most you'd made was 100, 110. You averaged 100 grand for how many years, you said? Oh, 10. 10, 10 years, call it. Yeah. Okay. And your business is doing around a million bucks, million one. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in the first 90 days coming off the 360, you went deep and you started doing all the things that we talked about and you got really super focused. So let's talk about what happened in 2021 in literally 10 months of time. We went from, let's just say a million dollars to $3.55 million in sales. We went from netting 100,000 to 500,000 net. I also want to put in the factor of that net was still at 500,000 while we paid you 300,000. Yeah, you paid, and, you, you went all in yeah, last year. Yeah. yeah. So all that's paid for, and we're still working with you on other things as far as our SBU. So. so when we tell people, because a lot of people are like, oh, these guys are trying. I always tell people, look, we will find the money. Money will never get between me and our friends and the people we work with. When, when, when you heard that, you're like, all right, well, let's put that to the test. I make 100 grand a year. If I can grow my business and still make at least 100 grand a year, then I won't have any objection. That was kind of the conversation mm -hmm. we had. And here you go. You paid us. You, you, you went to the 360. You've been to all of our programs. You platformed your business. You're in our management services business in the SBU. And, and you paid us almost three hundred grand last year in in ten months because mm -hmm. you went all in. Not everybody goes all in, but you went all in. And despite paying us that much money, for the first time ever, you made five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. How much cash did you end the year for the first time ever through your business? How much cash did you end the year with that you had sitting in your checking account? Well, we still haven't paid Uncle Sam yet, but we we we've, we've got well over four hundred thousand. So you accumulated. Yeah. You paid yourself, you accumulated this cash. Of course, we all have to pay Uncle Sam. Yeah. That's the tax for being yeah. in the United States. Yeah. So so now, if you can figure out a legal way to minimize that, that's great too. But the mm -hmm. fact is, is that's that's why we get to live in a great country, because yeah. we, we have an economy that we support. So, so, so um, you know, sometimes they waste 80% of the money we give them, but we still <laughs> got to give it to them. So, so that's, that's another show, another day, another conversation. But for the listeners... We're going to walk you through kind of what's happened in the last 10 months, 11 months. And, 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 but the results, I believe you should always lead out with the results because people tend, uh, what I've noticed on social media, and I know you and I have had this conversation, is there's a lot of people that talk about a lot of things and they sound pretty good. Mm -hmm. But very few of them actually talk about the results because they don't have any. Mm -hmm. Not only for their clients, but for themselves. And that was my issue, issue with social media is the amount of bullshit that's out in social media and the number of people who present themselves as I've arrived or I'm an up and comer that actually haven't arrived. And in a lot of cases, they're not even an up and comer. Mm -hmm. For the listeners on my show, I like to use facts. I like to use data. I like to use real people. And I like to use real results because I think that's what people can connect with that are serious. Yeah. So talk about. Uh, you don't have to get into the details of all the programs you've been involved in with us and how we do it. What I want is just your personal kind of transformation in one year and what it's yeah. meant to you, your family, your life, your, your community. Like, like, talk a little bit on the deep side about the impact and the transformation you've gone through in less than a year. Um. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to get emotional because the, the, the individual who I was before I came and the individual who I am now and still working on very diligently has been, in my eyes, a complete transformation. And it, and it comes to the context of how I reacted to people, how, how I was... 
well, plain and simple, a very stern, straightforward, and probably a lot of times not a very nice guy. And my life has completely changed from the knowledge that you have given me, the books that I have read, the mentoring that I have fought through following you, and that's changed my life. I, my my brother specifically has said, "You're a different guy," and and that, how do you put a dollar value to that in itself? My reactions with my children and and how they are in life and how I am trying to lead them versus dictate to them how my life has changed relationship wise with my wife we we not only am I doing all of this stuff but she's now in it as well and we're holding hands to go to these events and and instead of me being in a stressful environment and, and I don't believe in stress but it's you have to use that word that tough environment of being a business owner and having all of the weight on your shoulders. It's not easy. And to have somebody else who's been there, done that, and lead you and say, hey, wait, wait, what if you just did this? And the ship is, only has to move a few degrees and all of a sudden you're on that. So to be able to take that knowledge, the knowledge, people talk about knowledge as power, but the application of knowledge the action to the knowledge. Knowledge is profit. And when people start to understand that, that what you're doing, you're, you're giving us the knowledge that allows us to make profit. That's phenomenal. And, and so, talk about, so um, that, the leadership part, because you know one of the things that I don't really spend a lot of time talking about the leadership programs and the, the the leadership mentorship that we do here that's not it's not it's something I do it's something that I, I'm passionate about I've created I've been doing it for years I've worked with world leaders on this John Maxwell Jim Collins story Musgrave the only astronaut that flew all five space shuttles designed deployed and then fixed Hubble I mean I've had such phenomenal mentors Sharon Lecter uh, Robert Anthony Hector Lamarck and so condensing down all that I've distilled and learned from these people and putting it into a system that then I can easily translate to you. The transferability of that knowledge, that information, that kind of little course correction that sends you into a, a multiplication of impact, like it amplifies your impact. Most people wouldn't believe that that's possible this quick. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about how fast you were able to identify those gaps, have a solution that we've been teaching you, and 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 the leadership, more importantly, how much emphasis I put on, if you want to change your business, you must change yourself first. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the most, the deepest, most impactful thing that you said to me is you need to change yourself. That was hard. Hard to look at that and say, wow, maybe it is me. And would my 25-year-old self probably have said or accepted that? Probably not. But my 53-year-old self looks at that and says, yeah, that's deep and meaningful. And when I look at the factor of what that does, it, it it's how I now turn around to my remarkable employees and how I talk with them and how I want to mimic and model after what it is that you do and try to guide them on their path. And it's not just the factor of now how I am more worried about myself. I'm now more worried about how my employees are going and what what their role and their path is going to be and how I can imp- impact them personally, professionally, and financially. And it's that total big picture of how I look back now and, and I truly, I, 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 I take that moment in time and whether it's like right now or the moment in time where I'm with an employee and look at how much I appreciate 
appreciate those kinds of things where I never did before. I was just moving and trying to get things done, and almost robotic-like. Yeah, it's a difference for business owners that are listening to this. The, the, the direct correlation is it's the difference between you feeling like you need to push your employees to get things done and you're generally disappointed because they underperform mm-hmm. and they will let you down and then you get frustrated versus creating the conditions for those employees to pull you to a higher level of success and want to delight and surprise you and overperform so that you can be proud of them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so for, for you that are watching or listening, I, I want to stress to you that, that business mastery has to be coupled with leadership mastery. You, you can't decouple them because, because when you're the highest example in the business, when you're the person that gets to make all the decisions, when you're the boss, right, when you're the authority, um, the only way to actually build your business is through influencing other people to do things that they normally wouldn't do or feel comfortable doing. And that only happens if you accomplish and approach it the right way, mm-hmm. because otherwise you offend them and put them in their, their change status where they're like, I don't like this. I've, I've never had to do it before. I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to do it. Uh, you're making me do it. I'm going to prove to you, even though I won't say this to you, I'm going to prove to you it won't work, so I don't have to do it. Like All the things that don't allow change management into the business so the business can grow and scale. Now, now the, the only way you inject that into the business is by being a better, stronger uh, leader who's more interested in your people's success than your own. Right. And when you made that conversion... It's not an easy thing. You have to kind of delicately walk through it because it's easy to make mistakes when you're trying to make big changes, right? Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden you make that pivot and you realize I'm not paying people to show up. I'm not paying them for a job and I'm not paying them for their time. I'm going to start showing people I'm going to pay them for their results. Yeah. And you start using that language with your employees. So if you're listening to this, understand the language you need to use with your employees is I'm not paying you for time and for your job description. I'm paying you for the results, the impact. But for them to hear that, what you learn through the personal, professional, financial goal planning mm-hmm. was you got to align that success with them. Otherwise, they're not going to hear it. 100%. And when you started doing that, what happened with your team? It was easier to communicate with them when we talk, talked about our, our mission, our vision, and our core values and, and being able to take all of that in the direction of where we're going as a team. And when we start having our morning meetings and, and where we never had morning meetings before and what were our wins yesterday instead of saying we should have done this and we did this and why didn't you do that why didn't you do that when you start taking all of that and you say hey mrs johnson called in and she said that we did remarkable on this project and and she was never been happier and then this person did this that's a win you know, and we start talking about those on a regular basis, and then all of a sudden, then now the guys are even, well, like, yesterday I installed, you know, 30 square feet uh, in an hour, and, and, and today, you know, I, I did 45 square feet, and, they're, and they're, they're trying to come up with wins. And all of a sudden, now that's a winning culture, a winning team, that everybody's doing it. I got guys that are literally coming in and beating me into work. They're staying after work. They're putting in, you know, 2,500 hours in a season. And we, we're not even done with the 12 months of what it is that we've done, you know. We just had a snow event a little while ago, and in three days we had almost 40-some-odd hours. Was and what's funny is you, told, you, you when we first met, you were saying, like, you don't understand the seasonality. During the snow season, we're shut down. Uh, we started talking about one of the things we do with business owners is we look at add-ons, we look at convergence of other service areas that you can implement and deploy with your team to keep them busy. Because business owners think about the work they do. They don't think about the relationships they want to create. And if you could use the winter time to build relationships with people that have problems, then they're going to use you in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And you're having a dialogue and they're not going to go to a third party because you already have a relationship. So you pivoted from, okay, I'm going to not worry about revenue right now. I'm going to worry about how to build as many and amass as many relationships during our slow season as possible. And I'm going to find a way to reward our team. And then we're going to find some services we can do to monetize it. And we started building that system. And then all of a sudden, boom, in your slow season, how much you did as much revenue in your slow season that you did in your 
big season. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, our our snow season this year has quadrupled this this season on somewhat because of Mother Nature. Sure, she but, always she always is a good help if she. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, we it was the mindset of saying, okay, go out capture these these accounts. We're going to start to service these accounts, and then we're going to have guys working and in, in doing this stuff, and then. It's also our teams looking at saying, we're not gonna just sit here and hold back. You know, when you talked about that December time frame and how you need to get out and sell, our revenue goal was 3,400,000. At the beginning of the year, it was 3 million, and we thought we were crazy. And we platformed with you, and, and you come up to me, you said, you're just about at three, go to three, four. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? We not only hit three four, we went to three five because all December we sat there and we called clients. We helped, spent the time on the phone and, and doing the things going, that you learned yeah, to do. Exactly absolutely. how to do it, what to yeah. say, what to say to your clients, how to how to make your clients feel like you care about them versus trying to sell them something, yeah. which is the most important thing. So, Taking the awkwardness out of prospecting. You know, literally December last year was zero when it come came to selling projects. So how do you, how do you put a number to that? thousands of percent yeah. in, increase you know that's it's 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 crazy when you sit there and look at that but you know we we sold you know another hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of projects and not huge ones but just good size our sweet spot projects where we know that we're highly highly profitable on it and 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 what message does that send Versus doing zero in December and your team being like, okay, well, we never do anything in December, so why even try? What message does it send to your team when you're like, hey, we're going to hunker down, we're going to do this as a team, and then they have what would have been one of the largest months you ever had up until you started your relationship with us? What 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 message does that send about how much better your better months could be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 they, they don't think that there's a lid anymore. They they literally just say this is what we got to do and let's go go do it, and then, you know now you know we have everything broken down into what our season is going to be like for next year and how we're going to start to attack that. On because you're in, you're basis. in our SBU, so we yeah. do your annual planning. Yeah. And in your annual planning, we break out all the areas of opportunity within the business. We build the strategic plan with you. We build the budget with you. We build the compensation structures for you and your team. We target your earnings so that you know what you're going to pay yourself plus what the business is going to profit. And we build the forecast into what you need to spend your money and invest in right. so that you can get to the next level of size. So you did all that. That's that's how we professionally engage businesses. Let me ask you a question. What What is your target? What is your budget? What's your target for 2022? Seven million. Seven million. So, so people listening to this, look, when you have now, now this is a high accountability for both of us, right? Because if I was a listener, I'd be like, okay, I want to know what that dude does this time next year. I want, I want to hear what, 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 what kind of success, because that's a that's a key indicator for how well we're able to help businesses grow and scale and create value. There are there are there are three levels that we look at from the standpoint of the the budgeting factor was the four point five. 5.5 and then it was like 6.5 and I'm like okay so why should we even think about going to the low one let's shoot for the high one and it, it, it it's like what Grant says if you want to go try to achieve a billion dollars why and and if you don't quite get to that billion that's okay but realize that you got to 999 million well, how is that bad? I try to review a million, and you get in, and you get to seven hundred million. You're like, that's even, that's okay, right? right? I'm gonna, I'm still going for a billion, right? So, so everyone that's listening, understand the way that we do budgeting and forecasting compensation programs is we always have three targets for the business. We have the high target, the mid target, the low target. The low target we use to set the actual expenses off of, and that's based on what you did the year before and how much profit margin we want to generate. And then we set incentives on the mid and high target. So if you get to the mid, you get you get great incentives. If you get to high, you get huge incentives. Yeah. So that your team is pulling to those higher numbers with you versus just relaxing, expecting you as a business owner to do it. So if anybody's listening to this, you're like, oh, well, I'm, I, I don't don't get that guidance. I don't get that advice. I don't know how to do it. I usually screw up my comp structures. I'm always changing them. These are all mistakes business owners uh, have. And unfortunately, most CPAs have never run a business, so they don't know how to give you any wisdom or advice or guidance. They just 
look at what other businesses do and then tell you the average. Um, so if you want to be above average and you want to do the right things and you want to have big success and you want your team to have confidence, because now your team has confidence as you as a leader because first they saw you be willing to put the work in to change yourself. Mm -hmm. Then they saw the results of what's, what that means into the business. Now they've seen how organized you're getting the business. And, and now they're aligned with that, with the targets. And so now they have clear visibility into how they can go and succeed by working and helping you. How refreshing is that as a business owner to have all that in place in, in a year? I mean, it's a, there's a lot of weight that's lifted off your shoulders that way. Um, I also feel that there's a lot of work for us still to do to well, be I'm, better I, and, and, you, and you, more you, efficient. You, I, Ten years and a million dollars in revenue. Yeah. You pop to three and a half million. You make five times what it would take. It would have taken you five years to earn what you earned this year. Yeah. So you're pulling time forward. When people talk about yeah. how do you pull time forward, you pull time forward by getting the results in one year that you would get in five or ten years. Right. Right. But now that you've done that, you're like, now all of a sudden you're talking about, I want to hit seven million. Seven yeah. X, which would generate ten times what you ten years worth of what you would have paid yourself. Right. This is for people listening to this, this is how you pull time forward. This is how you this is how you do in five what would take you five years or ten years or twenty five years. This is how you do it in one, two, and three years. If anybody's listening to this and you're like, I want to pull ten years of income forward, I want to pull twenty five years of income forward, I want to pull twenty years of success and grinding forward into one, two, or three years. Then click the link and see what this is about. Yeah. Because when you met me, you were like, I don't think, I, I, I want to believe this, but I don't believe it. But I'm willing to have my eyes wide open and I'm willing to make an initial investment to understand it. And now here you are 12 months later, yeah. pulling five years of your life forward yeah. with enough momentum and enough enthusiasm and enough excitement and a team that now you're looking at pulling effectively uh, seven that would drop that would be a million five of profit mm -hmm. based on what your what your targets are yep. if you made a million five in profit this year or when you make a million five it's important to be intentional when you make your million five of profit this year that is 15 years that is your life's work in this business in one year yep. what you would have paid yourself or what you did pay yourself right like if that's not a big enough target of 10 x in your income I don't know what it is yeah I, I, I look at all of this and, and I, I just, if people are questioning whether or not where they're at, I was making a million dollars a year. In revenue. This, yeah, in revenue. This year, I made one half of that in net profit. And, and people have to sit there and think of that. Now, what is that worth to you as a business owner to be able to turn around and do something like that? I mean, you. To be able to have the guidance and to be able to follow somebody like you, Brandon, and, and this is not to you know blow smoke up your ass, but you, you are f absolutely freaking phenomenal. And to be able to follow behind you and, and sit on your coattails and have your guidance, I, I, I'd pay anything right now. I really you know, I appreciate that. The, the, the thing for me is anything and everything that I have been able to do and break it into systems and deliver to an entrepreneur None of it is possible. None of it actually happens if I don't have a partner like you. You gotta, you gotta do your part. Yeah. And and we've had so much success with this so fast, and and yet my frustration is is when people don't choose to make it happen. It's all about the action. Yeah. All about the action. Pat, I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to reshoot this next year, update everybody on where yeah. we landed and and, and overachieved because yeah. I know we will. And, and you're a great friend, you're a great yeah. partner, and you're a great leader, and I'm very proud of you. I truly appreciate you, Brad. Thanks for being yeah. on the B. Dawson Show. Hey, if you're a business owner, and you're sitting there going, I want to take this next year, 2022, and generate what would normally take me five years or 10 years to do to pay myself and to pay my team. If you're a business owner that's in struggle, maybe you've got some resistance right now. Maybe you've got fear, anxiety, stress. Maybe maybe the government's making it difficult. Maybe your local government's making it very difficult for you to, to succeed. We have solutions and answers. We've worked with tens of thousands of businesses. Our commitment, our mission is to help you. Thank you for listening to The B. Dawson Show. And make sure to click the link, leave some likes, let us know what you think of this podcast. 
or this YouTube uh, video, depending on what you're watching, or an Instagram video. Just let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to have an opportunity to work with anybody who's in business who desires to grow scale and create value for themselves and their teams. Thank you for watching another episode of The B. Dawson Show.